Alright guys, Mexico and Poland have just played that a nil-nil draw in Group C. After an eventful day in Group C, I think it's fair to say with the Argentina Saudi Arabia result. But uh, yeah, this game, it, it, it was not the greatest game ever. The first half was uh, very dull. Poland didn't attack whatsoever. They played five at the back, three in midfield. And uh, Lewandowski and Zielinski up front. And Zielinski isn't a striker. Let's get the elephant out of the room here. Um, he's uh, his most attacking. He's a number 10. And that, that's pushing the boundaries, I think. He's at his best when he's playing a number eight position. In theory, he should be one of the slightly more um, offensive ones in the midfield rather than being one of the forwards. It, it, it would have been better if uh, Arcadius Milik had started, I think, for Poland. Because uh, there, there, there was absolutely nothing from them in the first half. And Me Mexico had a few half chances, but nothing really clear cut. But, like Poland defended well, don't get me wrong, but... It wasn't until the second half when they decided to go for it a little bit more that uh, the game opened up a bit and it came a more um, watchable game, <laughs> Let, let's put it that way, or at least a more entertaining game. The big event of the game was obviously the penalty, and I, I think it was a penalty. Um, I don't think Lewandowski was going to get to the ball before Ochoa got there, but uh, the, the defender is definitely trying to obstruct him somewhat. So for me, yeah, penalty was the correct decision. VAR got it right. And VAR have been pretty spot on, I think, so far with decisions. And uh, yeah, Lewandowski took it. And I, I was thinking, um, when, when he stepped up to take it, I was thinking, I was, I was caught in two minds. Lewandowski's obviously a top quality striker and his penalty record is, is amazing for Poland. I think he's only missed one. Um, so when he stepped up to take it, part of me was thinking, OK, he's definitely going to score this bit. Also, part of me just seeing Guillermo Ochoa in goal for Mexico. Obviously, he's a Mexican football legend. It, God knows how many appearances he's made for them. But uh, it must be near 150, if, if not already. Um, and he, he's played at, I think, four World Cups, possibly even five. I don't know if he played for them in 2006, but... He'd, he'd have been young then, but he's 37 now, and I just thought, yeah, he's got one more in him, hasn't he? Um, like he is, he, he is a World Cup legend, uh, a show like for Mexico, and it, it was a fantastic save, Lewandowski. It was a well, it, it was a well struck penalty from him. Um, didn't put it right into the corner, but he put enough power on it to make you think that the goalkeeper shouldn't really be saving it, but Ochoa managed to get there. And fair play to him. It was an absolutely brilliant save. And yeah, Poland though that they, they they were just so much better second half. They they had a lot more chances. They they were getting forward a lot more. They were pushing the wing backs forward. Matty Cash was getting forward a bit more, which is is what his game's all about really. Uh, and there was none of that first half. Mexico still had the odd chance here and there, but uh, I, I I think they they didn't make the most of the space that was being left behind when Poland's fullbacks got forwards like Irving Lozano when he was played out on the right I thought that that wasn't making the best use of him and for the final five ten minutes of the game in, in like right right at the end when he was moved over to the left there were a couple of occasions where he'd play a one-two with Raul Jimenez and he looked a lot more threatening and um, so I, I'd, I'd preferred to, from Mexico point of view to see him uh, starts on the left. Like I don't think Vega was bad on the left for Mexico, but he, he, yeah, Liz, Lizano's obviously a, a level above uh, Vega in terms of ability. And yeah, they, I I haven't um, seen Jimenez play quite so well as he did when he came on in in the past couple of years since his injury. Well, his injury took like seven or eight months to recover from, so he's only really been fit for like just over a year since his injury, but. In that entire time, I, I haven't really seen him play uh, that well, but I thought he was decent when he came off the bench tonight. I don't know if it helped. Um, that it, like Obviously, this game wasn't it played at the pace of your standard Premier League game, so that, that might have helped him a little bit more because it allowed him to get hold of the ball a little bit better and bring his teammates into play. Um, but, yeah, he... He seemed to do quite well when he came off the bench, I thought. And
and th this group, Mexico, Poland, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, I mean, if you look at the table right now, it's how you'd expect the group to be, except from it's upside down. <laughs> Like, uh, my, my prediction for this group was Argentina first, Mexico, then Poland, then Saudi Arabia. It is literally the opposite of that. It's Saudi Arabia and po Well, I think Poland's only above Mexico. I, I don't know why, because in, in theory, that they've had the exact same result. And Mex M comes before P in the alphabet. So I don't know why Poland's are above. Uh, it could technically be because I think Poland's were the away team in this technically, but I don't know how that works because it's a neutral venue. So uh, I, I don't know what happens there. Um, it, it could be that they got less yellow cards that, that happened in tip uh, with Senegal and Japan, I'm tempted to say, at the last World Cup uh, in Group H with Colombia and who else was in that group? It must have been a European team. Um, Oh, it could have been Sweden. Yeah, I think it was Sweden in that group. Um, so, yeah. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, so the, it, it's not going as you'd expect in this group. And to be honest, Saudi Arabia have been the one team in this group who I think have been convincing so far. I don't think Argentina were horrendous in the game earlier today, but Saudi Arabia really did impress me, especially defensively, how well they held the defensive line. Um so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Mexico and Poland do against Saudi because in theory Saudi have beaten their toughest opponent in this group, which takes some doing. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't overly impressed by either Mexico or Poland tonight. It, it wasn't uh, most, it, especially first half, it was a tough watch. Second half, it, it was better when it opened up a little bit more, so it was a bit more watchable. But yeah, um, uh, if I was picking one of these teams to go free, because you would think that, oh, although in theory, you'd think Argentina would probably beat both of these with a little bit more pressure on them. And uh, the fact that Argentina, I think, took their foot off the gas a little bit today and it, it bit them in the arse big time. Um, if they feel as though they need to win against these two, in, in theory, these two could be the two that end up uh, exiting the competition. So it, it's really, this group, Group C, is going to be a really good watch for the uh, next four games that are in it because it's going to go right to the final day. This um, I don't know what the next games are. I think Argentina, Mexico's one, and Poland, Saudi Arabia. So if, if Argentina beat Mexico, that'll make it really interesting going into the last game. Um, I, I couldn't even tell you what the Poland, Saudi Arabia score is because... I, I thought Saudi Arabia were going to be a bit pants, but they've shown themselves to be quite a decent team, especially um, as, as their sort of a team that's uh, worth more than the sum of its parts. Um, so, yeah. This game, though, definitely not a thriller. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.